Today we're going to look at a SCAR audio amplifier, but before we do that, I had a question for the community. I wanted to find out, you know, what was the deal with SCAR? Why are they so popular? Why so many of the kids at the local high schools have vehicles with these stickers on them? Why are they using them? Some people said it's because they're cheap, budget friendly, they're highly advertised, um, they do what they say, they're more on the budget side, but you know, back in the old school days, the budget stuff was junk, so... The logo is also catchy, and as is the name, and I have to agree with that. And this guy says it's cheap, readily available, the name sounds cool, use a cool font, all their amps are black. It also helps that most models do rated and a little over. And then Doug says, hey, check out Google Ads. Do a search for Sundown Audio and see what you get. So I tried it. <laughs> and yes, search for Sundown Audio, and Scar Audio has bought ads that appear at the very top of the page. Very smart. But if you also go to Amazon and search for Sundown Audio, guess what shows up at the top? That's right, SCAR Audio. So the amp I decided to pick up is the Amazon bestseller, the RP1200.1D. Right now it's on sale for 144. It may be higher than that when you look at it. But this guy says they're big on Amazon, affordable, and have been accepted in the base egg crowd, unlike Boss. And yes, Floyd Mayweather actually did an ad for Scars. That's pretty cool. This guy says something that really sticks with me. Whatever gets the kids into audio, I'm all for it. And I have to agree with that, right? You got to start somewhere. And if you start with stuff that's halfway decent, all for it. This base package on Amazon for 322 bucks, you get an amp, subwoofer, wiring kit, everything. That's a pretty good deal. Again, we picked up the RP1200.1D. It was on sale at the time of this video. Sometimes manufacturers send me amplifiers to look at and test. Other times, like this case, I just go out and buy something my own because it's very popular. Steve Mee did a video on this two years ago, but I'm going to try to give it a different spin than the way he did it. So let's check out. Here's the box for the SCAR. Get cut into it, and let's find out what's inside. take a look at what's included in the box first off you get the manual which covers a lot of different models from the rp line i think it's all of them the mono blocks four channels uh, five channels all of them here you can see the rp 1200.1 is here we're going to talk about the specs here in a minute the different power ratings and all that uh, also you get one allen key which is very interesting and i'm going to talk about that later as well 3.5 millimeter cable that's for the base remote and we also have the base remote, which is metal enclosed, has a really nice potentiometer, does not have a power LED or a clip indicator or anything like that. And I've talked about this before, but the reason I don't like the 3.5 millimeter jacks on these is because they're really easy to pull out or they may not have a good connection. So uh, I really prefer the ones like the telephone style connections or the ones like the Cat5 connections. Let's get the amp out of the box. What I did notice right off the bat is it had some like oily residue on it. Not really sure what that's all about, like some WD-40 or something. So I got it wiped off. I opened up the amp just to make sure nothing inside had leaked and it appeared to be fine. So I'm not really sure what that was all about. On the outside of the amp, on one side, you can see the protect and power LEDs, the remote there for the base remote. RCA inputs left and right. There are no outputs. Base EQ 0, 6, or 12 dB. Also has gain potentiometer. Doesn't say the voltage there on it like some of them do. Low pass filter, 220 hertz down to 50 hertz. We're going to talk about the low pass filter as well. Subsonic is off up to 50 hertz. On the opposite side, we have two different speaker connections. This is a mono block amplifier. You can fit eight gauge wire in there. Having two different speaker outputs just helps for dual voice coil or multiple subwoofers. Also, 4 gauge for the power and ground inputs. There is no fuse included. SCAR recommends a 100 amp external fuse. And I talked about the Allen key before. The thing really nice about this amp, and Kicker does this as well on some of their models, the same size Allen key fits all the different connections, which is very convenient. Just keep one key in the car. As for the ratings, 4 ohms, 500 watts, 2 ohms, 800 watts, 1 ohm, 1200. Those are all RMS power ratings at 14.4 volts DC. As far as dimensions go... On the long side, 11.9 inches, the width, 6.2 inches, height, 2.25 inches. The millimeter equivalents are there as well. 
Now we'll get the amp wired up for the amp dyno. I'm not gonna go through all the different things about the settings of the amp dyno and all those tests. You can see previous videos if you wanna see that. First off, let's try four ohms mono. The amp is rated 500 watts at 14.4 volts. Certified test first takes us up to 1% distortion. And let's find out what we get. 544, again, I'm trying to let my voltage drop a little bit lower than normal. So we have 14.32 on the voltage there. So the amp did rated power at less than 14.4, which is good. Uncertified takes us up to clipping. In a lot of cases with these base amps, especially the cheap base amps, I, used, I just use an uncertified test as the one I go by because you're not really gonna care about the 1%. 562, 14.09 volts. Again, succeeded by passing the rated power. Dynamic sends a 40 hertz pulse tone into the amp, kind of like a subwoofer kick drum. And right at 600 watts, look at that, 593, 14.34. Now what about the efficiency at four ohms? And 78%, I'd like to see it much higher than that at four ohms, honestly. So let's rewire the dyno, reset it up for two ohms and it's rated 800 watts at 14.4. Certified test again is first, up to 1% total harmonic distortion, and we get that easily 860 at 14.25 volts. Good run again. Now let's reset the dyno for the uncertified test, run it up to the clipping point, and what I've noticed with the SCAR amps is they just keep counting until the end of the test, so <laughs> keeps going up 941, 13.94, so well above the rated power, uncertified up to clipping. And again, their ratings say 14.4 volts, but they don't say clipping or 1%, so it could be the clipping is what they're using. Dynamically, the amp has good dynamic power, 1,077 watts at 14.48. Now the efficiency dropped to 73% at two ohms, and this is not a good sign moving forward. One ohm, the amp is rated 1,200 watts, 14.4, um, that's why you call it an RP1200. Certified test first, and we didn't quite get it. We got 1132 at 13.97, and you know, that's close. I wouldn't call that a fail. I'd like to see it do the number, but I didn't have 14.4, so I'm gonna give it a pass. Uncertified, again, is what I like to use for a lot of these cheaper amps. It easily got the 1200 watts, 1304 at 13.65 volts. So you're gonna get the power that you want from an amp like this, you know, for a budget price, uh, you're getting good power. Dynamically, the amp has got good dynamics built in over 1700 watts here, just over 14 volts. Now the thing that is concerning is this efficiency. I measured 55% <laughs> efficient at one ohm, 147 amps at pull, that's not really good. Now I did boost up the voltage just so we could see a higher voltage test ending a little bit higher than 14.4 and we did get the 1218 certified and we got a little bit better efficiency. We got 64%, that's still really low for a class D amp. I like to see it at least up in the mid 70s or higher. Here's results page, you can see everything. Again, the one ohm certified is the only one that came up a little shy. Also did run 1.33 ohms. You can see those results here on the screen. And if you wanna see 0.8 or less, Stick around to the end. Now let's find out with the Gately Audio Lord of Bass subwoofer box, how's it sound? Can it bump? Let's find out. All right, a little fill the bass, DJ Magic Mike. All right, this is the woofer test, and what you need to realize is the sub is a dual two wired to one ohm. Check out the rise during this test.
This song bumps really good with this box. 808 Dreams from Basotronics. All right, now let's check out the amplifier, find out what's inside. Also, check out some thermals here. After all this bumping, amp did warm up. It got, you know, kind of warm to the touch on the outside, but I didn't see anything above 9 degrees Fahrenheit here with the FLIR. So, uh, didn't get over overly heated and did not shut down. So, we took off the bottom panel as quick as we could so that we could, again, hit the FLIR and find out what was hot inside the amp. And, of course, the output inductor is going to be the hottest part. 160 some uh, degrees Fahrenheit and uh, yeah but other than that I mean everything was not bad at all internals of the amp you know classic um, half bridge uh, Korean style amp made in China 2200 microfarads 25 volts on the filter caps for the rails 3300 microfarad at 100 volt and yeah I mean this is a classic design that you've seen probably over the last 15 to 20 years it's rock solid. Not a whole lot of issues going to happen here. Just don't mount it to your subwoofer box, and uh, that way you'll probably be okay. This amp looks good. Now let's talk about the pros and cons, the things I like, and what I think could be better, or at least things to be aware of. Good stuff is the value. Obviously, the money per watt is good. Base knob is included. Good build quality. Has a variable subsonic filter. Great dynamic power. The one key to rule them all. I love that. Alan loves it too because he don't like to give you all his keys. Easy to obtain. Amazon, scaraudio.com, down for sound. There's a ton of places you can buy it. Could be better. Has low efficiency at one ohm. The base remote connection using that 3.5 millimeter jack. I don't like that. The low pass crossover appears to allow some vocals through, which is very odd. I would expect it to have at least a 12 dB per octave crossover and you wouldn't hear any vocals, but I was actually hearing them. Stick around to the end and I'll show that again. It's been a while since I've tested the SCAR Audio Amplifier. You know, they usually perform right at spec, a little bit better. Again, to what a lot of people have said, budget price, you, know, you get a little bit more than you pay for, and they seem to be pretty reliable too. So overall, not a bad amp here, especially for the money, so I can see why the young kids like them. And again, you know, like what you want. This is just to show information. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. So I don't recommend running this amp at less than one ohm, neither does SCAR, but I figured just for testing purposes, I would show you guys 0.8. Certified, I got 1276 at 14.59 volts. Reset the dyno for the uncertified test up to clipping at 0.8. And yeah, keeps counting. Look at that, almost 1500 watts, 1471. So that's really good power. Dynamically, again, this amp has got dynamics built in over 2000 watts, 2115 at 14.71. Very good. So if you listen closely, you can really hear the uh, vocals. And I've got the crossover not all the way down to 50 hertz, but it's pretty low, it's about 80. So I think they use a low crossover slope filter, like maybe 6 dB. It definitely doesn't seem to be 12 or 18 because it's not really cutting out all the vocals that it should. Yeah, how them sound waves go? Mm -hmm. Here we go, slow motion. Trying to lose my phone. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs>